Hello everybody, and is everybody well today? Oh, I am so delighted to hear that. And me? Oh yes, doing still superb, still vertical and still above the grass. I don't know about you where you are today, but here in England it is getting chilly. We're now well into autumn. Today's temperatures we're expecting to soar to a high of 15 degrees Celsius. That's 59 degrees Fahrenheit. So I've got my jumper on today. I'm definitely going to be needing this when I'm flying today. And where are we going to fly to? Well, I got an interesting message from a YouTuber and I'm not sure how to pronounce this. It's, you can see it right here on the screen. It's I am gets Luke. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can pronounce that at all. So I'm just going to call it Luke. Is that okay? You're Luke from now on. Okay. Anyway, Luke wrote me and he said, Hey, Father Dane, could you do a flight from San Diego, which is K-S-A-N, to Sacramento, KSMF. And I thought, hmm, of course I could. In fact, I've made that flight several times in the past. I used to fly a Cessna 410 up and down the west coastline of America for, oh, a little while, but I was based, of course, in Orange County in Los Angeles. But every once in a while, I would have to go down to San Diego, and there's a nice little executive terminal there. And I would also go to Sacramento. Now, did you know that Sacramento is the capital of California? You did? Oh, good. Because a lot of people seem to think that Los Angeles is the capital or San Francisco. You hear a lot about those two places, but very little usually about Sacramento, but Sacramento is the capital. And there are two airports there at Sacramento. There is the main international airport, which is a nice big airport now, and it's got extra runways. When I went in and out of there, I think there was only the one runway. I'm not sure if I can remember that correctly, but most of the time we went in and out of what is now the uh, executive terminal, which is more towards the center of town. So there are two airports right there in Sacramento to worry about. Make sure that we land on the proper one. Oh yes, we better do that. Get into trouble with air traffic control. <laughs> and I've got some good scenery for the trip today. San Diego KSAN airport scenery is made by Latin VFR. Beautifully detailed scenery, lovely detail in that. Sacramento KSMF airport scenery, however, is freeware. I wasn't able to find any compatible uh, airport scenery for this airport, so I looked on AVSIM and found some very good, very detailed freeware scenery, so I'll be using that today. And we're going to follow Southwest Airlines Flight 2289 today. So Southwest Airlines Flight 2289, and that is WN2289, put that into uh, Flight Aware and it will bring up the history. And our route is going to take us right up the center of California. 
will be flying over the top of Los Angeles, over the top of Fresno, Bakersfield, and all of the Napa Valley area until we get to Sacramento. By the way, that same route is flying right above what is called the San Andreas Fault. Now, if you watch Hollywood disaster films, and there's plenty of them, San Andreas Fault has been made the topic of several films where the fault takes place, there are e e explosions, there are volcanoes, there is lava flowing, and the west coast of America slips off into the Pacific Ocean. There's all kinds of disaster scenarios that Hollywood has come up with. I doubt that we're going to see any on our trip today. But we will be flying over the wine country of California. And it is a beautiful area, that particular part of California. Fresno and Bakersfield, I also know that quite well. I had some friends that uh, ran a, um, a crop dusting operation. Crop dusting was still a big thing then. I don't know if it's still allowed anymore, but it was then. And uh, I used to help him out with some crop dusting uh, every once in a while. That was a lot of fun, flying really, really low, going across those fields and then having to climb to avoid hitting the hedge at the other side. But that's all in the past. We won't be doing that today with Ryanair 186. I promise. <laughs> okay, then. It's time, I think, to go on into pre-flight. We need to make ourselves a flight plan, but we also need to check out the weather, the conditions, and then put everything together. So are you ready, Luke? Then let's go to pre-flight, shall we? Well, here we are in Flight Aware, and we're looking at Southwest Flight 2289. Here you can see the designator right there, WN2289. This particular one arrived over 20 hours ago at B18, in right over here in Sacramento. It left Gate 7. We're going to try to see if we can get Gate 7 ourselves when we go into the simulator. And with a bit of luck, we'll try to go for B-18 when we get to Sacramento. This particular flight took off four minutes early and arrived 24 minutes early. Oh, they were really doing a good job. Looking at the route, here it is. Here's the border with Mexico at the southern part of California. There's San Diego. Goes up across the area and goes over the top of Los Angeles and then goes right up the valley in the central California area until it gets to Sacramento right here. Looking at the cruising altitude, ah, they were at 40,000 feet. Well, if they were at 40,000, I suppose we can do 40,000 as well. Here's the wind direction for San Diego, and this is current right now. Here, here you can see San Diego. Here's the border with Tijuana, and over here, Tecate. So it says the wind is coming at 340 degrees at four knots, and that's pretty much the direction that you can see here. Visibility 10 statute miles. There are clouds at 1,200 feet. Temperature is a warmer 22 degrees. Southern California always did have some really nice weather. Altimeter is 30 inches. Oh, straight up there. Uh, that's a little higher than the standard, which is 29.92. But it's been VFR at the moment, and it has been VFR before that for the last several hours. Looking at the runway, here you can see the, the runway. It looks like we'll be departing then on runway 27. That's the number right here. So here's 27 down here. 
This, by the way, is the executive parking area. Over here, now we'll be parked at one of these stands here, because this is where Southwest Airlines, they make all of their departures from, is in this area here. So it looks like we're going to have to leave here, taxi down, and then take off in that direction. That's my guess. The weather for Sacramento, is, this is rather interesting. Look at this. It's a bit of a swirl. It's coming in from all directions and seems to be blowing into Sacramento, doesn't it? But it's saying wind is calm, visibility 10 statute miles, no cloud under 12,000 feet. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. Altimeter is 29.97, which is almost standard barometric pressure. Temperature is 18 degrees, still warmer than here in the UK. Here you can see the, the new airport with all of the extra runways there. Um, well, we'll just have to see what they give us. I'm not sure actually which direction the wind is going to be blowing in when we uh, get there. So we'll just have to be dependent on ATC. All right, let's go and file the flight plan. We are Ryanair and we are 186. We are departing from KSAN, so K-S-A-N, and we're going to go to K-S-M-F. So K-S-M-F. And San Francisco is our alternate, should things go pear-shaped. There's our aircraft type, and SimBrief uses all the information in the aircraft type to make all their calculations. This is the type of engines, the fuel flow, everything, weight, everything about that aircraft is contained in this airframe information. So that is how SimBrief makes the calculations for us. Cruise profile is six. And there's our registration, E-I-E-N-I. -E it says one hour, 57, 50 minutes for flight time, departure and arrival, 3-5 left. All right, well, well, we can take that. And let's go ahead and put in 40,000 feet over there. We'll follow them exactly. If they can do it, so can we. We're going to be, of course, full, and we will have, of course, one ton of very precious cargo. There's the route, and it says the route distance is 428 nautical miles. And there it is, leaving here, flying over the top of Los Angeles, going over then into Lando, the shaft of VOR, all these waypoints on the way up until we get to Sacramento International. Should things go pear-shaped, it's a short run into San Francisco where the information is right there. There's the basic information about San Francisco Airport. We're not anticipating any issues, though. It should be a straightforward run today. So let's go ahead and save this and let's generate the flight plan. And here's what SimBrief has returned. There's our aircraft. There's the origin, destination. San Francisco is the alternate. Flight level 400. Airtime, 1 hour, 11 minutes. Block fuel is right there. No extra fuel required. A routing, no dispatcher remarks required. And down here, looking at the flight plan, there's our designator, Ryanair 186. Right here, F400, that's our flight cruising altitude. And there, of course, is the route that we're going to follow. KSFO, San Francisco, is the alternate, and there's the information about it should things become necessary. We're going to need to know cost index 6. We're going to need to know the average cruise wind for our 
programming, we're going to need to make sure that we have 7,051 kilograms of fuel. That's pretty much 7.1 metric tons. Reserves 2,834 kilograms or 2.8 metric tons. Trip and taxi, 3,524 kilograms or 3.5 metric tons. No tankering recommended. This is the route. I'm going to post this in the description box below the video. And here is the in flight information. Um, we're going to be flying at 40,000 feet, so that line will be the closest to us. Look at the temperatures, minus 49. That is going to be cold outside. Well, be one way of cooling down the champagne glasses, don't you think? Just roll down the window and stick them outside the window. <laughs> As if. But we are going to need to know the descent information for flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet. For flight level 150, which is 15,000 feet. And for flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet. Now, this is the wind aloft information for flight level 390. We're going to be flying 1,000 feet above that, but this gives us the uh, information that we're going to need. Leaving San Francisco, we've got some variable winds, mainly going to be crosswind. And so that's what we're going to be facing all the way along. There's a lot of wind that's blowing in from the Pacific Ocean over the land and that is what we're going to have. So we'll have crosswinds all the way up until we get there into Sacramento. This is the vertical profile starting out here from San Diego right here making our climb all the way up to the top of climb here and then the descent all the way down into Sacramento. A pretty straightforward uh, flight path. It's uh, the crosswinds could also be a little headwind along the way, so not necessarily the best of winds, but we'll, we'll make do with what we have and make it a great flight. Is that okay? Sound good to you, Luke? All right. All right, let's go into Navigraph charts. All right, here we are in Navigraph charts. We click on flights, we click on new flight and from SimBrief, and then we're going to use the latest one that we just made. We click on KSAN, open the charts list, and we're going to need to know the airport information, parking spots and coordinates. Looking at the airport, there is the entire airport laid out. As I say, we are going to be at one of these uh, terminal spots somewhere around about here. At the parking coordinates, seven is the one that um, the other one left at. So if we can, if it's available to us, we'll try to get number seven right here at terminal one. We'll be using the, the Padres Zulu 2 departure. And that's this one right here. I'm going to pin that one to the bottom. Going over here now to our destination, we'll open up the charts list. We'll need to know the airport information and we'll want to know parking spots. It's calling for three five left on arrival. So we'll go down here and here we go. ILS localizer three five left. Let's pin that and let's open that up. So it looks like our route takes us up and then we should be able to intercept a final straight in approach if that's the way it works out. 
This is the arrival star. We'll pin that. So looking back again at the We'll need to know certain things here. There's the, let me close this and, and that. We'll need to know the ATIS is 126.75. Here's all of the approaches. There's the tower frequency, 125.7. Here is the localizer air frequency of 111.1. Final approach course is 348. And this is uh, going to be our decision height for the ILS coming in of will be in 224 feet is our decision height. Airport elevation is 27 feet. Notice here Transition level is flight level 180. Transition altitude is also 18,000 feet. That's the same thing, 180. Sacramento, this particular VOR is frequency 115.2. We'll put that into our VOR2 frequency on the navigation settings. And 111.1 one, one, one decimal one will be in our VOR1 decimal uh, navigation settings. Anyway, this is the initial approach fix to come right in. And then the intermediate fix is LMAC right there. So here you can see at LMAC, we need to be at 3,000 feet. Make our descent then to 1,400 feet. Then straight down the glide slope to land flawlessly, as we always do, into Sacramento. Here's the decision height information of 224, which, of course, we'll be following. So we've got the basic information that we need and coming in from Sutra 4. So 3-5 left, ILS, 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 where is it? And ILS 3-5 left and coming in from Sacramento, and there it is. So that joins up the route straight in, coming into here, and then north for a straight in landing into Sacramento. Does that sound okay? All right, let's close all of this up, and we've got the information, we have everything that we need, so, right. Let's go into the cockpit and let's get things ready. Ah, uh, hello Luke. Do come on inside. Welcome to Ryanair 186. I'm very glad to have you on board. And we are here in sunny San Diego. And the skies are absolutely flawless. We are, we have great weather here. So California is famous for its weather and it's not letting us down today. So we are here at stand seven. It happened to be available. So we are in exactly the same spot of the flight that we are following today. So. Let me show you what the view looks like from here. Now looking over to the left there, you can see the skyline of San Diego itself. United Cargo in the background. And there are a few kamikazes floating around. <clears throat> right here you can see we are at Stand 7 and looking straight through the terminal windows itself. And over on the right, there is more information and it's very detailed. There is, however, one slight problem with this. And this, by the way, is made by Latin VFR. And I've tried to correct this, but there's no way of doing it. Do you see here the, um, this is the jetway. <laughs> 
it comes to an abrupt halt. But on an HD screen, the full jetway is there. But on a 4K, this is what is shown instead. So there is obviously some sort of a little glitch in this somewhere. I'll have to get in touch with the good people at Latin VFR and ask them about this because I wasn't aware of this. But anyway, this is Latin VFR and in every other respect, it is perfect. Now we are, in case you're interested, our frame rate and I have all of these 3K, these three monitors here, each set at full 4K resolution. And I'm using 20, 21, 20, 21 frames per second, which is very, very good. Okay, right. I got the fuel on board. I went around and I kicked the tires, made sure they were inflated. I made sure that the all the polish was done on the fuselage. Everything is set. I went and cleaned the windows. I mean, I made sure they were sparkling clean. Look at that. Aren't you impressed? It's almost like there's no glass there at all. They're so perfect. You know, look at that. How perfect can you get the windows, eh? All right, so now we're ready to get ourselves started. So... Turn on the battery, we make sure that there's sufficient voltage there, and we turn on the fuel pumps, and then we start the APU. Now, here's what we're looking at. The low oil pressure light has come on, and then this is the engine gas temperature for that hour. There it is. It's starting to rise. Look at that. Coming up. And it will crest at about there, and then it will start slowly to descend. The low oil pressure light has gone out. This, by the way, is the start switch for the on the overhead for the uh, auxiliary power. And up here, you can see I've got the switch set for the APU generator, but it's not showing anything at the moment. Ah, now, this light has come on to say that there is voltage available, so I click that, and now we have 115 volts of electricity in which to set up everything and program the entire computer system. So the first thing I'm now going to do is I'm going to turn on the IRS for the left and the right GPS system. I'm going to turn on the galley light, emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seat belts. Over here, I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat. I'll leave the probes off for the moment. Then I'm going to turn on the left and the right hydraulic pumps. Now, over here, the forward service hatch light is open. And the equipment light is on because the air stairs and the forward hatch is open to allow our passengers to start to board. And yes, there they are. They're out there now. Our self-loading cargo is getting ready to board. So over here, I turn on the APU bleed, recirculating fans, turn on the packs and... There we go. Now we get some good fresh air blowing into the main cabin through those overhead vents and everybody will be nice and comfortable on the inside. And then the last thing I'm going to do is click on that, put the steady light on so that the people on the ground know that we are here and we are working. We are working, aren't we? Yeah, we're working. <laughs> well, now that our passengers are starting to board, it's time to program the FMC. Here we check that we have the latest air rack, that it's current, and that there are no issues with the program. Position initialization, and we put in our start point. 
and that is K S A N for San Diego. We are at gate seven, and there it is. It comes right up. That is the correct position. So I'm going to put that into the temporary and then enter it into the active. Now our GPS is, is set. Go over to route and here we put in KSAN again and we're going to go to KSMF. So KSMF And we are Ryanair, R-Y-R, and we're number 186. Go page down. Our first point, uh, waypoint, is E-H-F. So E-H and F. Put that in. Then our next waypoint is Nuri. So N-U-R and A-Y. And then we activate that and execute. Easy peasy. Now we go to fix and we want to put in our destination airport, which is KSMF. KSMF. And then we want to put in a four mile circle, a 10 mile circle, and a 30 mile circle that will appear on the screens uh, when we're getting close to our airport. Then we go over to descent, go to forecast, transition level, you remember what we discovered that was in pre-flight? That's right, it's 180, so we'll put 180 up there. And now we need to put in the three altitude settings for our descent, so that would be for flight level 200, Flight level 150 and flight level 100 or 10,000 feet. Q and H at our destination is 1015. And then the information for flight level 200 is going to be 225 at 17, 225 at 17 and for flight level 150 it is 206 at 15 206 15 and at 10,000 feet it is 191 at 17 191 at 17 and put that in we execute that now we go to departures and arrivals, go to departure, and here's when we now need to listen in to ATIS to find out the current conditions. And ATIS is located at 134.5, so 134.5. Diego International Airport Information, Bravo 202 Minor Zulu Wind Calm Visibility Greater than 20 Miles Sky Condition Clear Temperature 21 Dew Point 1 Minor Altimeter 1016 Landing and Departing Runway 27 BFR Aircraft Say Direction of Flight All Aircraft Red Back Hold Short Instructions Advise Controller on Initial Contact You Have Bravo Right, we have Bravo and it is going to be Runway 27 and we've got the uh, altimeter setting of 1016, which we'll put in over there. So I'm going to put in 27 on that, and we will be using the Padres 2 departure. And there it is, the Padres Z2 departure. And execute that. Now we go to departures and arrivals again, only this time we're looking now at our arrival in Sacramento and we're looking to land on runway 35 left, so I'm going to do that one, and we're looking at the Sutra 4, 
arrival, which would be that one, transition sack, and put that in. Now I'm going to go to legs, and we're going to check the route by going through these settings. Now I'm going to turn this to plan, so that we can see the route, and then we'll follow this as we go through each of the steps. So I'm going to step through this. There's our departure, pretty straightforward departure. And there's the first one, and we're going to join those lines up, and then going up and going up. Still continuing. Here you can see the 30 line, 30 mile line that we put in. Let's see how this works out. There's the SAC now, and there's the LMAC. So that's coming in then straight down the runway for a landing on runway 35 left. Good, that works out. That's, that's how we want it to look. Now I'm going to turn this back to map. And then over here I'm going to turn it on to weather. Double click this to give me data. Now I'm going to extend the range to 20 miles on here. On yours I'm going to put terrain. Double click for data. And then turn on the TCAS so that we can be seen by other aircraft. And there's already some other aircraft floating around here. All right, now let's get our departure clearance and see what they give us. And we're requesting IFR clearance. Clearance delivery, Ryanair 186 IFR2, Sacramento International, ready to copy. Ryanair 186 is cleared to November Uniform Romeo Alpha Yankee Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain 6000 departure frequency is 127.3 score 6755 Ryanair 186 cleared to November Uniform Romeo Alpha Yankee Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain 6000 departure on 127.3 score 6755 Ryanair 186 Redback correct Contact ground on one, two, three, point minor. We're now tuned on to the ground frequency. Uh, I see that all of our passengers are on board, so we'll bring up the stairs, close the hatch. That hatch, that's the electric motor you can hear for the air stairs that are now being folded up and brought in underneath the forward hatch entry area. <coughs> now before we get the taxi clearance we're going to complete the remainder of our programming so I'm now going to go to route, perform the initialization. Now if you remember we have 7,051 kilograms of fuel, but we're going to be using 2,834 uh, for reserves, and the trip is 3,524, and that makes 6,358 kilograms, or 6.4 metric tons is the closest one, so 6.4 will go right in there. Reserves at 2.8. Cost index is 6. We're cruise altitude at 400. The cruise wind, that's the average wind at our cruise altitude is 228 at 24. 228 at 2.4. Transition altitude is 180. Flight level. And then we double click the zero fuel weight and it calculates everything for us. And then we execute that. Go to N1 limit. We'll accept the 21 degrees. We're not going to do any D rates or bumps on this flight. We will be 10 degrees of flaps. And double click this to get the center of gravity and the trim wheel value, which is 4. 
one click on each of these gives us the value for V1, for rotate, and V2, which is liftoff. Now, since we're departing on runway 27, the departure heading for runway 27 is 275. So I'm going to put 275 in our course heading here. And on this one too, 275. And 275 also on yours, if that's all right, Luke. I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to put 40,000 feet in our altitude. That's usually set by ATC, but uh, we do our own thing on this flight. So I'm cheating a little bit there. I'm going to put 40,000 feet in our flight altitude. Now this is for pressurization on this panel right here. And our elevation at the destination is 27 feet. That's closest to 50. So I'm going to put 50 feet for the landing altitude at our destination. And then over here it is 146 for the max speed. Put 146 in there. Okay, flight director on, flight director on, VNAV and LNAV button, and we have green lights on both, so we have a good program. Arm the throttle, VOR1, VOR2, VOR1 and VOR2 on your side. The VOR1 is, has the frequency of 111.1, which of course is the localizer. The VOR2, it has the frequency of 115.2, which is the um, Sacramento VOR. If you remember that on the screen, that's what we have. Right, when we do our departure, we're going to need to uh, go back with our tail to the right, and then our nose goes to the left because we need to go down in that direction to get to the end of runway 27 for takeoff. Right, let's get ourselves... Oh, your damper is on now and flight continuity light went out. So fuel is all on, windows are all locked, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are now out, MCP is programmed, takeoff thrust bugs are all set, takeoff speeds are all done, TDU pre flight is completed, rudder air on trim is free and clear, taxi takeoff briefing, we've just done that. We want our tail to our right and our nose to the left. And now I'm going to put the anti collision light on right there. Okay, everybody's on board, so we're ready now to get ourselves a pushback. And I'm switching to RTO. Now then, which engine would you like to start, left or right? Which one? It's up to you, it's your choice. You want to do the right engine today? That's number two. So I'm switching to engine number two. So now let's go ahead, tune into the ground and get our taxi clearance. Ground, Ryanair 186, we're Delta, <coughs> to taxi IFR. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short of runway 27 via taxiway. Bravo, Bravo 1, contact tower on 118.3 when ready. Taxiing, hold short, runway 27, using taxiway, Bravo, Bravo 1, Ryanair 186. All right, we have our taxi clearance. Cockpit to ground. We'll ask these nice people to give us Go a ahead. push. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our right. Copy that, ready to push. Tail to the right. Parking brake release, please. Parking brake is released. I'm now going to turn off 
the air conditioning because we need the air to go and power the engines to get them spinning. Congratulations, here we go. All right, I'm switching now to engine number two to start. Start valve has opened. And the engine is spinning up. There's the N2, it's coming up very nicely. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. There we go. Fuel is introduced. I'm now looking for the engine gas temperature to rise. And there it is. Look at that. Cooking very nicely. Now I'm looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. And it has. We have a good start there. And... There, the engines have ignited. I'm looking up here now for 115 volts to appear to show that we have, ah, there it is. So now I'm switching to engine number one, starting engine number one. Start valve has opened. Here's the N2 is spinning up. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. And coming up. There it is, bringing in the fuel. Pushback complete. Parking brake set. Parking brake is now set. Engine Brick gas set. temperature is coming up very nicely. Now looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. And it has. We're getting a good start there. Steering pin is pulled. Ground. Watch for the slip release. Guide center right and now in flight. Ready to taxi IFR. Thank you, gentlemen. Three nine or two seven taxi two and hold short of runway two seven using taxiway Bravo Bravo one contact tower on one one eight point three when ready. I've got taxi to make an short runway two seven using taxiway Bravo Bravo. One, okay. Three nine or two. And uh, we have good power on both engines. So now I'm going to switch to the engines generators on the main engines. Turn on the packs again and the air conditioning, turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. We're now running on generated en uh, electricity from the main engines. Okay. Right, I see where everything is at. San Diego is directly ahead of us. There's the skyline. Look at that skyline. Isn't that great? Anyway, let's do the after start check. Generators are on. Check. Probe heat is now on left and right. Anti ice is not required. Isolation valve is okay. Start levers idle detent. Flight deck door is closed and locked. Recall is checked. Flight controls checked. Flaps. We have green lights. We have flaps 10. Stabilizer trim is correct, and auto brake is RTO, speed brake lever down detent, ground equipment is clear. So since it's clear, I can turn on the taxi lights and attendants. Hang on, we're about to taxi down to the end of the runway, and we're pretty much going to be following that aircraft down there. So, break off. Let's give a bit of a boost to the power to get ourselves unstuck and get out of the way of all these kamikazes that keep appearing. There's a lot of excellent detail in this. My goodness me, such a lot of detail. Let me see if I can get some video of this. Now this is the airport scenery for San Diego made by Latin VFR. Look at all the detail of this. This is really very, very detailed. And sweeping around and 
looking to the front and then over there you can see the San Diego skyline and then to the right there's one aircraft that we're passing by beautiful detail though I mean they really have gone to a lot of trouble in putting everything together for this really is extraordinary and it's over there where I used to park my uh, aircraft when I flew in and out of here so we'll be coming up close to that to pick a fight with us. Get out of it! Do you believe these people? Where do they get their driver's licenses? They must get them in a box of cornflakes. Don't you dare turn around and come back at us. We really do. We've got a bullseye on us somewhere. And there's the parking area over on the right. And I don't know if you can quite make them out, but you can see some aircraft carriers. The American Navy is here. You know, the U.S. Navy, they have a big harbor here. Oh, and there goes the aircraft taking off. So we should be next in line. about the wobbles I got caught trying trying to uh, start the Danby graph charts which you can now see at the right here so I'm going to enlarge this so you can see where uh, where we are it's a little difficult to steer and do everything else at the same time and So we'll go up to the whole short line and then we will do our checks. Okay. Right, I'm going to tune into the tower. And request takeoff clearance. Tower flying at 186, ready to go. Runway 27, IFR 2, November Uniform, Romeo Alpha Yankee. Flying at 186, clear for takeoff. Runway 27. Cleared for takeoff. Runway 27, Ryan at 186. All right, we are cleared for takeoff. So let's do the pre takeoff. Engine briefing is good. Engine bleeds are on. Let's engine starts are good. Position is now on and starting the clock and all lights are on. Attendance secure for takeoff and all is good. So here we go then. Let's get ourselves moved into position and take off. I had a, an issue with my calibration there. Go now we've got to make a 
a tight turn here. Make sure nothing's coming. Okay, and lined up on the runway. Advancing power to N1. Power is stable. Toggle button pushed. Full power. And we're rolling. Rotate. V2. V2. And we're uh, airborne. We have positive rate. Good. All right, we are on to. Okay, we are on our way. Climbing very nicely. Crew is released to go to work. Going to go to flaps five. Okay, let's see if I can see anything here. There's the view of San Diego to the right of us. As we are climbing out, pretty much it's a straight out departure for us. And this is the climb out, looking good. Bringing flaps up. doing very well, we're climbing through 5,000 feet there. And there's a view of the Pacific Ocean. Beautiful day for flying, just beautiful. Well, we're on our way. Navigraph charts are now active, so you can follow our route along. Right, we're about an hour away from Sacramento. So we're about an hour away from Sacramento, so why don't you go on into the back and get yourself some of that complimentary champagne and caviar. And as soon as we are on our approach and descent into Sacramento, I'll give you a shout and bring you back up here to help me land. Because that is always the fun part, isn't it? I'll see you then in about an hour. International 
Airport information, Yankee 2150, Zulu, Wind Calm, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition, clear, temperature 172.12, altimeter 1015, landing and departing, runway 34 right and runway 34 left. VFR aircraft, say direction of flight, all aircraft red black hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact, you have Yankee. Oh, there you are, Luke. Do come back on in and take your seat. Did you have enough to eat and to drink? Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Let me tell you where we are. We are 18 DME miles from the Sacramento BOR, which we have to cross to get to the airport. We're just coming up to the 30-mile circle on our screen here I have fasten seatbelt signs on I have main lights on the crew is alerted that we're descending we are we have the course settings for our final over there the ATIS is reporting that the runway 34 left and 34 right is in operation so now I need to <coughs> get landing clearance. And there are a lot of airports around this area. Ah, Sacramento Executive, we don't want that one. in landing to runway 34 left which is very good now I'm going to go to flaps 5 we need to slow up a little bit here don't want to get ahead of ourselves we're coming up on the Sacramento VOR in just a moment and that's when this needle will switch around and point in the opposite direction You know, it was interesting flying over the, the valleys going in. It really was. It's been a long time since I've flown this route. All right, let's see. Pressurization correct, seatbelt signs are on, check, recall is check, auto brake is number three, landing data good, first briefing, start switches, and going to continuous, 
and we're doing all right. We're coming around. We're coming on to. We're just about one mile from the Sacramento VOR, and that's just coming up on us. And then this needle will switch. Well, there, starting to. There it goes, and poof, there it goes. We've now crossed over the the VOR, and now the needle is pointing away, and we will be going on to final in just a moment. Right, we need to. Get ourselves organized here. All right, crew secure for landing. I don't have, oh, there it is. There's the airport ahead. I see the airport. And three, four left is on the, is down there. So we, we have it in sight. Here we go, we're now making our turn onto final. Speed is 170. We're coming down to 3,000 feet. 29. We're descending very nicely. Right, I'm locking on to the localizer. And in a moment, we should be able to intercept the glide slope. Right, going to flaps 10, we are 10 miles away. There's the 10 mile circle. The five mile circle is just up 2,500. 2,500, check. Right, locking onto the glide slope. We're on the glide slope. Good, everything is looking good. This has been a perfect day for flying. There were no bumps, no turbulence at all. It was cold up there, but we did not need any kind of uh, anti-ice. We were absolutely fine. So 347 on here. And we're all set now for landing. Okay, gear down. Collapse down. We have two white, two red ahead. The runway Nine is inside. Six clear to land runway three four left. Clear to land runway three four left. Line at one eight six. We're clear to land. Okay, everything is looking good. All lights are on. Engines are continuous. All good and we're on course we're all set to go so what do you think do you think I should do it do you think I can okay I haven't landed here in a long time you know all right I have control <laughs> for better or for worse We are coming down the glide slope. Everything is on course. To white, to red.
little bit of a crosswind. 500. 500. 400. 300. Approaching minimums. And... 200 minimums. Minimums. We are committed to land. One hundred, fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. Reverse thrusters are on. And going off. Right. Line at one eight six exit runway when able. Okay, we'll take this one then. Line at one eight six contact ground on one two one point seven one two one point seven line at one eight six. All right, we're clear of the active runway, so we'll stop at this point and do the cleanup. And switching off, crew is released to go to work. All right, everything is looking good. And switching off all of these, stopping the clock. One minute, uh, one hour, 12 minutes is the time that we have taken for the run. So. Now, according to this, if you can see the uh, chart with me here, we're at Alpha 8. If we go straight across, that will take us then to the front, and we're looking for Bravo 18. If we can find it, we want Bravo 18, because then that is exactly the same point that the previous flight uh, came in at. So, all right. Okay, all right, attendants. We're moving towards the gate. This is really, really delightful scenery, you know. I mean, this is freeware. And I looked it up and I found out that Sidney Schwartz is the designer of this. This is freeware scenery that you're looking at here. Isn't that good? Look at look at the detail. Got to admit that they've done a lovely job with this. So we're just going to continue down here until we get to the Bravo 18. Now look at the okay Bravo 18 is this one this is the Bravo 18 one so stick your hand out Coming up to a stop. There we are. Right, let's break on and 
engines off, shutting down. Stairs and are being extended now and the forward hatch is open. So IRS is off, your damper off, galley off, exit lights off, fasten seat belts are off, window heat off, probes off, electric hydraulic pumps all off. Okay, lights are all off, lights are all off. All clean up, yes. And now, fuel pumps are off, APU is off, and shutdown is complete. How about that? And we are here. I'm now looking out from the side here. We are at stand B18, Bravo 18. And look at the detail. And this is freeware. This is freeware. Admittedly, the, the building is a little, what can we call it, uh, generic, but you know, the detail of the runways, the parking stands and everything else is all very, very good. So, <coughs> welcome to Sacramento. You know, I had to admit it was a, felt a little funny when I was crossing over Fresno and seeing the t small community of Clovis right by the side because that's where my uh, pal lived and he was the one that was running the um, crop dusting operation and we had a we had one heck of a time uh, going around there and uh, you know flying just above the crops <laughs> themselves to to do all the dusting is quite a quite a technique and then when you're coming around and you're lined up and you've got the, the flag at the other end and you're going straight towards it, then you turn on the, the dusting, you get to the end, you've got to turn it off, you've got to go up and do a, a teardrop quick to come back around. Wow, it's, uh, it is quite an art. I must admit, I did, ex I, did I really did. Uh, get a kick out of the exhilaration of flying so low and uh, just just a matter of you know four or five feet above the top of the crops it uh, it was exhilarating it really was and we managed to make the flight all the way down the valley and there wasn't one eruption not one earthquake and California did not disappear into the Pacific, so if you are a Hollywood script writer, I'm sorry, but there was nothing to be able to give uh, a script for a Hollywood blockbuster today. It was very ordinary, and California is still there with its beautiful golden beaches. And today is a lovely day. I wish we had a day like this in England, because this is, this is a beautiful day, but we don't. We are in autumn, we have cloud, it's cold, and that is what we expect at this time of year. So Luke, thank you for inviting me to fly this route. I did enjoy it very much. It was a, a very interesting route. So thank you for flying with, we, with me and with Ryanair 186 today, and I'll see you on a future flight and everyone else Thank you. I'll see you all again next week on another flight of Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.